I think it is well enough with the fellow that I go to tell you about, I think he was from around Glenmore. <laughs> he was about 80 years of age anyhow when he was in the supermarket one day and he spotted this young one, she was about 20. And she was looking at him and he said to him, said, if I got you hardly interested in me, if I got after a while anyhow. We got to, sure enough, she was interested, and he plucked up courage, and he asked her to go with him. And she did. And it kept on, and it kept going from good to better, and in the wind up he asked her to marry him. So, because she said she would anyhow, they got married. Now, the two of them wanted the family, but there was no sign after about six months that there was any ch children coming along. So, the wife went to the doctor to see would there be anything wrong. So he did all the tests and after a week or so he brought it. He said, look, there's no reason in the world why you couldn't have children. And he said, what age is your husband? Oh, he's 80 years of age, he said. <laughs> and well, uh, see, that could be a problem already. And she said, is there anything, any advice you could give me to help me out? And he said, no, well, not really. And then when she was going out, he said, well, I could give you this advice, he said. You could take in a lodger. <laughs> so we got anyhow after about six months she came back again and she was delighted she was pregnant. And the doctor said to her, when they got him delighted, the lodger did the treat. <laughs> oh yeah, must have, she. And she's pregnant as well. <laughs> none up in the north of Ireland and she was working there, she was a nurse and she was working in the hospital and she used to do a little bit of, in her spare time she used to work in the, in the nursing home and there was a whole lot of spare bedpans in the hospital that were kind of on their way out and they were going to be through out and she said she'd bring him along in the car and bring him to the to the nursing home. Because didn't she run out of petrol halfway there? And she went down to the local garage and she had no money but she did garage ran younger and she she said to him she wanted a gallon of petrol. She said he no problem at all, says he, I, I don't mind about the money. She said, no, I can. So because she went back and she, she got the, one of the bed pants. And because just uh, she went and she picked up a picture and she went back and he made a little funnel out of a piece of paper and she was putting it in the, the car. And who goes by on the Ian Paisley? And he looked over at her and he said, if that car start, he said, I'm going to turn Catholic. <laughs> Now that I'm after 10 or 100 times before. But uh, there's some people on here who never heard it. But was, in the 1950s, uh, anyone that's able to remember the 1950s, I remember, well, Midland, well, like, you know. But anyhow, there was no running water, no taps, no showers, no baths, and no toilets. There was everyone, nearly everyone anyhow, had a little house outside the, the lavatory or the privy or some other people had other names on it. But anyhow, I was the very same in, in America in the deep south. So there was this little family, the father, the mother and the son. And uh, the son was old enough now to do his national service and he had to go do his training. And for the first time in his life he saw bats and showers and all the rest of it. So, he went, he had to go to Korea and he was lucky enough to come home alive and he had a good few pound coming home and he also brought home a hand grenade. Now, when he was coming down to the little house, there was a little lane way up and he met his father. Now I have to put on an American accent here and I'm sure that Jody Cairns will see that I have a, a marvellous American accent. <laughs> so, uh, the, he, he was coming down and met the father and he said, Hello, Paul. <laughs> Uh, how about that for an American accent? And the father, the father said, hello, son. And the, the young fellow said, I see you have that old laboratory over there still. And he pulled the pin out of the, the hand grenade and he threw it at it. And up she goes in small, of course. And the father said, you shouldn't have done that, son. Why, Pa? Cause Ma's in there. <laughs> so anyhow, after a few minutes, Ma came out and she looked at Pa and she said, Must have been something I ate, Pa. 